Now, where this really gains some teeth, okay, is um, when we say that all of this is indefinite integrals. All of it's indefinite integrals, okay? But if you have a definite integral and you have some boundaries, this becomes both more powerful, but you have to be a little more careful with it, okay? Because so far, I keep on saying, we've got two things to change here, right? You've got a function, and then you've got your variable. Function, variable, function, variable. You've got to change both. They've got to match with each other, right? And that's what we've done. You can see by this point, everything in the question has been translated to being used. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the same question, but I'm going to give it some boundary values. And I'm going to turn it into a definite integral. Okay? Sometimes, yep. <clears throat> In this case, it will. They wouldn't, because when you have a look at this guy, this is going to be. This would be a semicircle of some kind. But actually, it would be an ellipse um, or a semi ellipse. Sorry. And so then, you, what you're doing is taking the reciprocal of that. It only exists in a certain domain. But exactly. Okay. Um, all right. So same integral. But I'm going to give it some boundaries, okay? These are the boundaries that I picked before. Uh, let me double check those. Yep. Okay. Now, here's what I'm going to do. Because I'm taking advantage of this question because we know exactly what it's going to be. Um, turning into, so we don't need to do any extra mental work. Um, you've already got written down what this is going to turn to in terms of use, okay? In terms of the function and then the variable you're integrating with respect to. However, now that we have boundaries, we should write one more line here, which is it's optional. Uh, it's kind of it's going to look a little bit weird, but I think it's really really helpful. When I write it down, you'll see why. Okay. See these variables here? Sorry, these boundaries, right? They are x values, yes? So that when you put this into the, um, the primitive function, you're substituting these in for whatever x is, okay? So there's something kind of implied here that x is equal to root 2 on 3 and x is equal to 1 on root 3, yes? Okay, now we've seen what happens. You've got to be careful with the, what those variables are, what the boundaries are, I keep saying the wrong word. Because if you're integrating in a different direction, like say if you're integrating with respect to y, you want y boundaries, not x boundaries. And we saw that with volumes, right? If you're going around this axis instead of around this axis. The same thing is happening here. So now, and if you've got another color, this would be really helpful. Now you can see there's not two things, function variables, function variables, that you need to change. There are three, right? Let's highlight all of them right now. Here, here, and here. The three things that you need to change are what we saw before, the function, that's the obvious bit. There's the variable you are integrating with respect to. We already saw how easy that was to work with. But the last bit, the bit that's so easy to miss, is these boundary values over here. These boundaries have to come along for the ride. Okay? Now the reason why we often miss them is because when you first write down an integral, because mathematicians are so lazy, we're like, yeah, okay, like 99.99999% of your integrals are all with respect to x. That's why we don't bother saying x equals x equals because you're just going to have a whole bunch of redundant notation. However, we're about to change everything so it's not in terms of x, right? So therefore, I like to write this line. This line here, like I said, it's optional, but it reminds me, hey, there's another thing you need to change. It's a very, very common error to go through this whole process and forget to change the boundaries, and then you get a whole different number at the other time. Um, or you get a number which doesn't exist, depending on the function you've got. Okay. So, um, we already used this thing over here on the right hand side. I'm not going to make you rewrite it. These are the tools we use to change the function, change the variables. How am I going to change the boundaries? Okay, good. So, these are x values, right? If I'm going to change everything in terms of u's, I just want to know what's u equal to at those x values. Okay? So I'm going to say, and again, off on the right, honestly, where I've written this as well, because it's, it's all of my side working to do the substitution. I'm going to say when u equals, and then I'm going to um, do an evaluation. So, sorry, when x equals. 
When x equals, I'm going to check each of the boundaries in turn. I'll do the smaller one and then I'll do the bigger one. When x equals root 2 on 3, u is going to equal 3 on 2 times that. Right. Yep. So you can see here my 3s are going to cancel. I'm going to be left with root 2 on 2, which is one on root two. that's 1 on root 2. You can see where this value actually comes from, right? Because I'm going to need to substitute into an inverse trig function. That's the lower boundary. I'm going to need the um, upper boundary as well, which is, I chose 1 over 3. So what am I getting this time? Yeah, good, because 3 divided by root 3 is root 3. So root 3 on 2, again, nice convenient value there. Now I'm ready. I'm going to do the same substitution that I did before. Like you already see where this is going to go. With one additional thing, I've got new boundaries as well. And here to indicate I've got new boundaries, instead of writing x equals, x equals, these are u boundaries, right? Now, okay? So you can see, for me, this is a mental tag. Okay, I've changed this and this and this. So writing this kind of helps me. Okay? So I'm going from 1 on root 2 to root 3 on 2. There's the boundaries that have been changed. I'll change the rest of it as well. Cancel, cancel. Everything. 1, 2, 3. All in terms of u now. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead. I already know what the um, integral is going to be. Uh, it's going to be a third out here. So where did you get the standard from again? There. Here. Over here. This guy. I'm just not, I'm choosing not to rewrite it because you have just written it and it's exactly the same integral. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. okay. Now it's worth saying, if I wanted to, you know, at this point here, we're like, yeah, we introduced you. You wasn't part of the original question. So that's why we came back to this, okay? If you really wanted to, you could change this back, have that in there, and then sub in your old x boundaries. You, you're going to get exactly the same result. But the whole point of it is that x, u, they're all dummy variables, right? They're all dummy variables. It's just standing in for some numbers. So we might as well change everything at once, and then you can just keep going through and not return back to your x's. They're, the x's are never going to be there in the first place if it's a definite integral. Let's go ahead and evaluate. So here, I'm thinking about what is the angle in what domain? What domain is sine inverse interested in? So I should say what range? From negative pi on 2 to pi on 2. So in that range, what angle, when I take the sine of it, will give me root 3 on 2? The answer is 60 degrees or pi on 3. However, I'm in calculus land right now, yeah? So I can't use degrees. All of our trig calculus results depend on radians, okay? So therefore, sorry, this is a bit naughty, but I've got no space. I'm going to evaluate the first one. That's going to be pi on 3. Must, must, must be in radians. And then here, what's the angle that's going to give me 1 on root 2? And that's 45 degrees or pi on 4 radians, right? So I'm going to go take away pi on 4. Pretty sure that's going to be pi on 12, right? So that's pi on 36, okay? Um, the original question had nothing to do with an area. So... Yeah. Um, therefore, I'm not going to say unit squared or anything like that. I'm just evaluating an integral. So, if your um, x values, right, they were, if they were small, like, for example, if the bottom one was smaller than the top one, and if you substituted it to u, and you ended up getting one that was bigger on the bottom and smaller than the top, yep. you still do it in that order. Correct. That's exactly right. So, the question was, like, at the moment, um, I actually don't know what these numbers are, but root 2 on 3 is, okay, root 2 is like 1.4 ish. So this is going to be like 0.4-ish or so. And this is 1 divided by 1.7, uh, which is going to be a bit bigger than a half, right? Because 1 over 2, 1 over 1.7. So this is bigger than a half, this is smaller than a half. So I'm going in the normal direction, from a small number to a big number. If you do it in reverse, what effect does that have when you integrate from a bigger number to a smaller number? Yeah, you're integrating in reverse, right? So therefore, it's the same as, I could use the property of, switching them around and slapping a minus sign on the front. But whichever I'm doing, I have to preserve which boundary is which. If they're asking me to go from B to A, 
then this is going to go from my new B to my new A, or whatever those are going to be. Okay? All right. Does that make sense? Any questions? Would it be better to start something? Okay. Go for um, Wait, so then if the bottom, so if like right now for the X boundaries, it's like smaller to bigger, but then in U, if it goes bigger to smaller, do yeah. you need the negative sign? Okay, that's a great question. So I'm going to refer back to, there's like a lower boundary for X. Yeah and an upper boundary for x, and they retain that whatever order they're in, they stay the order they're in. Now one of the interesting that happens is, and it's, it doesn't take too much imagination to see how you would do this, a small number here can turn into a big number over here, and, and vice versa. So what you might end up getting, I mean, in theory all I need is a minus sign, right? A negative sign would do it. Would turn this value into a bigger one, that, so then I'm going to integrate from big to small, okay? But the boundaries need to stay in their places, and that's what this so helpfully demonstrates. It's like, this one turns into this one, and this one turns into this one. If that ends up making these, like, bigger to smaller, then this function is also going to change, right? Does that make sense? So let's just do a really, really trivial example. If I, if I went from, say, okay, I don't know, integral from 1 to 2 of x dx. Okay, this is pretty trivial, okay? That's a trapezium, isn't it? Do you, do you see where x is? 1 and 2? Yep, yeah? okay. Now, obviously I don't need to use substitution for this, okay? But just suppose I said, let's get some space here. Let's just suppose I said, let u equal uh, minus x. I can do any substitution I like if, I, if it's convenient to me, okay? So in this case, I'm going to say du on dx is minus 1, okay? And x is actually going to be equal to negative u. Does that make sense? That's something I want to substitute in, right? So that's that. And then when I say, okay, well, what are my boundaries going to be? Well, when x is equal to 1, u is going to be equal to negative 1. And when x is equal to 2, right? So what is this integral going to become? It's going to go from negative one to negative two, right? What else is going to What else is going to change? This is going to be negative u. Minus d u on dx. Does it look good so far? Yeah. Have I done anything wrong? Cancel, 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 cancel. Right. This looks a bit weird, right? It looks a bit weird. Okay. Let's just go to the bitter end here. Okay, uh, this is going to become u squared on two. Yep. Can you evaluate for me? Ah, ah, yeah. right. So you see, even in the case where, oh wait, that's that's not what I want. Did I need to put a minus sign there to fix it? No, 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 no. Whatever made the signs turn around, so that instead of going from small to big, I'm now going from big to small. That's going to be that's going to come out in the wash over here. It has to. That's the reason why it changed the boundaries around. So of course, in this case, uh, what are we going to do? Four on to minus a half. So which is the same thing you would have expected. Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, that, that's okay. Don't worry about trying to compensate for yourself. Just keep the boundaries the same in the same order that they were, whatever they were. Okay. That's a good question. Is that in this 